somebody when you're going back to your seat. Squeeze them real hard. Tell them they are good looking. Yes, exactly. Hey, can you hand me that stool? Okay, a couple things. This morning we have um, is Mission Sunday, so uh, if you have committed to that, please make sure that you give that this morning. And also, if you have not, we ask that you pray about that. We are um, my heart's desire by the end of this year that we are completely funding the orphanage in Sri Lanka. It's about twenty five hundred dollars a month. Um, to run that, and that's my target. Uh, that's my heart. I want to. I want us to get to that point. So, um, if you can help uh, with that, I appreciate it. Um, we also got a call back from uh, another minister that we had kind of stepped away from on the uh, orphanage front. Um, y'all just be praying. If that's what God wants me to do, I will be obedient and do what He wants me to do. Okay, well, we're headed to Sri Lanka in a couple of weeks <clears throat> to help them with their daycare, preschool, uh, and uh, also minister to the couples. Um, in that country, women are not used in the ministry as much as they are here, uh, and they're starting to. I don't want to be too critical, but you know they are they're, the men are first class and women are second class, I guess, and that's changing. Uh, and that old thought patterns are still in the church, and um, a lot, and especially the folks that we're hooked up with, they have got a lot of couples in their in their ministry, like Pastor Net and I, that work together, and they were wanting us to speak into their lives and impart, and so we're really encouraged about that. We really believe that this church has been one of the forerunners in that here in America uh, uh, as truly partners. You know, uh, Annette preaches just as much as I do, and, and is, we, we all know it was better, and we know you all like, them, like her better than me, but <clears throat> other than that, so be praying, uh, and uh, uh, be praying uh, what you would or should, if you should, give, all right? Amen? Yeah. Don't sound too excited. All right, let's give this morning. Ushers, y'all ready? Stand and look uh, like you're going to rob them or something. Maybe they'll give more. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we desire to give to you uh, 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 with all our hearts, uh, with all that you tell us, Father. We're not going to give more than we, than we should. We're going to give exactly what you say because we are obedient to you. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen and amen. You may give freely. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Larry, put that in there when it comes back by, please. Oh, man. 
Go with me to John chapter 14, verse 6. I think that's where I want to go. <sighs> How many is ready to go back to bed? <clears throat> I did not want to get up this morning. I've been working on... Uh, on my friend's house, they are coming back. The Rogers, y'all give them a hand. And uh, I'm uh, older than I used to be. <laughs> Takes me a lot longer to do what I used to do. What's that old saying? Takes me all night to do what I used to do all night. Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto me but the Father. And that is not what's what I wanted. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, where's it at? Try 1613. I'm in the Father and the Father's in me. That's what I want. Hey, Bible scholar, can you help me and stop talking to your, playing with your grandson? No? Hmm? Oh, really? What, what's the verse? John 14, 10? Let's go there. Did you get in trouble? No? Okay. You look like you got in trouble. Days young. Days young? Yes. No. We're praying against that. That we're casting down that bad prophecy. We're prophesying that you will do good. You'll clean your room. You'll cook, and you'll be uh, you'll be uh, given a treat, whatever your heart's desire is, by mom, because you were so good today. In Jesus' name. Yeah. <clears throat> Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he doeth the works. <clears throat> now, uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I preached on uh, being in him and him in us, and that God should see, I mean, they should see God in us. They should see the Father in us, right? And then um, last week, I started to pick up some stuff of finish up and I kind of got distracted and started talking about us being out there and being the church out there and 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 last week was good I really kind of liked the format of that and just kind of talked that out but uh, this morning uh, I really didn't know what I was going to preach didn't know what I was going to do and at the last second I thought I, I need to go back and finish this part because Annette we didn't know if Annette was going to minister we didn't know to be honest with you really tired, really worn out, and, and just was not, not, didn't know what God wanted, uh, mainly because uh, I, I was exhausted. Uh, but with that, uh, I really feel like that I preached this the, the Wednesday, uh, the la uh, Thursday, the last of the conference that uh, in Hearn with our, my, our daughter, spiritual daughter and son down there, and um, I, I really think it goes with what we talked about. But first, I need to uh, kind of reiterate back a couple weeks ago. We focus so much on what do you focus on? Do you focus on the do's and the don'ts? Do you focus on the gifts of the Spirit? Do you focus on the Word? Do you focus on God? Do you, what, what do you focus on? Do you focus on uh, morally right? Do you focus on coming in the church and having a morally good family? Do you come to focus on the church because you, this is where you can get friends? It's social. What, what's the reason for what you're doing? And what I, what the last the couple weeks ago's message was, was that we need, when they see us, they need to see the Father. They need to see, all right, let's stop looking at babies and let's, let's pay attention up here. Uh, they need to see us. I mean, they need, uh, when they see us, they need to see the Father. They need to see, they need to see God. 
And too many times we want to show them the do's and the don'ts. People come into the church and we want to give them the list that goes to our church of what they should and shouldn't do. Or they come into a church that, like us, that the, the Spirit of God flows and uh, all they see is the spiritual side and they don't see any of the do's and don'ts. But they should see the Father. What did Jesus do? He said, I don't do anything but what I see the Father do. And everything he did, he says, he pointed back to the Father. Right? And, and in that, we've got to understand that we were made in his image. So the do's and the don'ts, is that we don't do those to get his approval. We need to get to the point where we're doing the do's and the don'ts because we're so in him and he's in us. Right? And then the other part of that message was when they see us, they see the Father. And when I, when I say something, it's the works. He doeth the works. What do you say? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not my, of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. So notice that he says, when I speak, there's action. Right? Because there's power in, of life and death in our tongue. So when we speak, we're creating. Like Whether we know it or not, we are created in our Father's image. And we have power. And we will either destroy or we will build up. How many speaks to your kids in encouragement? Are you always tearing them down? How many speaks about their job and how great it is or how bad it is? You're creating your environment. Whatever you have, you've created it. You've spoken it into existence. And that's hard to swallow sometimes, isn't it? Now, 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 you may go into an existing place that's already messed up, but God sent you there to speak life into it, to make a difference, to make a change. And we go into a place that's all messed up, and we're like, I need to get out of here. I need to go to a Christian environment. No, you were spent, sent there to change that environment. Amen? You were sent there to make a difference. You were made. And so when they see us, they should see the Father, and they should see the works of the Father. Amen? They should see the works of the Father. That means creative. That's me, that means miraculous. That means love when it seems no way to love. I mean, look at Nisi. She, she, just, she uh, uh, demonstrates that all the time with, with Billy. It, it, Billy is hard, hard, hard to love, but she presses through. We need to do the same thing. Amen? Ex exhibit the fruits of the Spirit. We, all of that should be an example. When they see us, they should see the Father. Not Jesus. He didn't say you should see me. He didn't say you should see the Word. He didn't say you, he didn't say you should see the Spirit, the gifts, or the fruit. He said you should see, they should see the Father. We should have the Father's heart. We should be exam, exemplifying the Father, in all his love, and all his goodness, but also in all his power, and all his creativity. And, 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 and we, we, need to get, we need to stop getting hooked on, it all has to be miraculous. Your, your creative power and your, your, uh, your ability with your hands, you're taking stuff like whether it be in paper or building or whatever, uh, 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 our, our people, you're developing with your skill set that place or that thing. If you're a mom, you're developing your kids. You're forming and shaping them with your words, with your actions, all of that. You are acting like the Father. Amen? And so if you are looking at the world or if you're looking at Satan or if you're looking at God, whatever you're staring at is what you're than promoting or building. 
So uh, when you get it mixed up, that's why sometimes your kids are all jacked up. Right? Because we're speaking two th- different things into them. Life and death. So when they see us, they see the Father. But the only way that that happens, the key to that is, don't you know that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me? That comes by the power of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is what gets us in the Father, and the Holy Ghost is in us. That's the means by which we're in the Father. Uh, where's it at? Where's it at? Um, I didn't get my Bible. Somewhere in this scripture, he talks about when the Holy Spirit comes, in that day, you'll see the manifestation of Jesus. When the Holy Spirit comes to you, that's when you manifest Jesus. That's the only way that you can manifest Jesus, and that's the only way that you can manifest God. He said, me and my Father will manifest to you on that day. What day? When the Holy Spirit is in you. Read that John 14 and read John 16. It's somewhere in there. But he's talking about when you're in me and I'm in you, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, then you will mani- we will manifest ourselves to you, and you're going to begin to show forth the works and you're going to show forth God. Amen? So the Holy Spirit is key to being in Him. So you can read the Bible all day long, but if you don't have the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the power. When, when the, the earth was, was void and without form, the Holy Spirit's over. And when, when God spoke, He spoke, but the Holy Spirit then made it happen. Amen? And it's the same way with us. We're void and f- formless And then he speaks over us, and we begin to change. Your job is void and formless. And you begin to speak over it, and it begins to change. But you have to have the Holy Spirit with that. You cannot just speak the law. Right? He said that there is death in the law, but there is life in the Spirit. Right? So the way that we're in him and the way that he's in us is by the Holy Spirit. And that's what brings forth the life, and that's what brings forth the change, and that's what brings forth us exemplifying God. And, and, and let, let me challenge you. How many, how many people have you led to the Lord this year, last year, the last two years? Maybe the reason why we're not is because we're not in the Father and the Father in us, and not, we're not in the Holy Ghost. And maybe we are working too much on being good. How many of us focus on, I just need to change this in my life? Or or how many of us are focusing on getting something that we think God wants us to have? That may be a house, that may be good things, things that he does want us to have. But we focus all of our, 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 our walk with God on those things. Are we focus on a good, uh, uh, a good moral battle? We focus it on, uh, uh, abortion, or we, we focus it on feeding some, the hungry, or, or we focus on, uh, focus it on educating people, or clothing people, or something. We focus on one thing. But how many lives are we changing? You know, we give somebody clothes, and next week they still don't have clothes. Because we didn't change them. We feed somebody, and, and that next week they're still hungry again. Why? Because we didn't change them. Because the Holy Ghost didn't come in and didn't change their lives. Amen? But but accounting to us or or looking at us, we focus too much on something versus being in. You know, one of my biggest flaws is I focus on building the ministry. One, making uh, an avenue for people to get into what they're called to do. Creating jobs so people have a job to go to. I focus on all the work versus focusing on spending time and being in devotion with him. You get, you get, into, this, you get into this mode, and you need to reverse it. 
Are you focused on the problem? My wife is on to me. You gotta get, you gotta get, you gotta, you gotta get completely in his face, because that's what's gonna change. That's what keeps you in his presence, and that's what gives you the power to manifest Jesus. And when you manifest Jesus, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In other words, he's the way in what you're doing. He's the truth. He's the answer to your questions or what's going on in your life. And he is the life. He's what brings the abundant life. And the only way that he manifests, are y'all getting dripped on? Sorry. I want y'all to step to this, this the next row. Sorry. We got a leak up there, guys, besides that one. So, Mike. <laughs> Put that on the list. Okay, so in him is the only way that we can manifest this and manifest some changes. How many want some changes in their life? How many want some changes in their lives? The only way that that's going to happen is if you are in him and he's in you. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the what was spoken. Anything that was made was made by him. He's the word. So if we don't have him, if, he's not manifest, if we're not manifesting him, then we're not manif- manifesting the truth. So we're not manifesting the change in our life that we need. Now, you can have some change in your life, but it may not be uh, uh, lasting. It may be the wrong change. But if you want the way, the truth, and the life, you've got to manifest Jesus, right? So the way that we do that is that we stay in the Holy Ghost. And I tell you right now, God, I mean, Satan does everything he can to keep us out of that situation. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. There's four things, there's four things that Satan does to keep us out of that relationship of the Holy Ghost and us, intimacy with the Holy Ghost and the Word. You need that morning time. It needs to be morning. Whatever your morning is, 6 a.m., 4 a.m., 9 p.m., whatever your morning is. And then at the end of the day, too. But really, all day. All right, so as you are with Him, that intimacy creates changes. That intimacy causes you to walk out the abundant life. Whatever your thing is, whatever you're wanting, whatever you're desiring, whatever you're longing for, all of it's different. Right now, I'm longing for A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3. I've got this list of the things that I'm longing for. And all that's going to come not by some rich guy coming in and giving it to me. All that's not going to come by filling up the seats. What's yours? Mine's the head of a ministry, so a, a norm, a, 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 you know, the normal thing is to see the seats full and, it, and producing all the, all the different ministries. That, that's, good, that's good, and we want that, but that can't be the focus. What's yours? Your family, your, your mom, you want to raise your kids a certain way. You want to see them grow up to be doctors and lawyers and all that. What's the fr- that's good things, but that can't be the focus. Him, intimate with him, face to face, mouth to mouth. Amen? All right, in that, four things that Satan does to keep us from doing that. Go with me to Galatians chapter 5, verse 4. Christ has become no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. If you begin to justify yourself by the law, by what you do right and wrong, you've fallen from grace, and you've fallen from your righteousness in, 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 in Christ Jesus. The only way that you are righteous, in other words, right standing with God, is through Christ Jesus. It's not by anything that you do. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by His grace and His power, you cannot sin. Amen? That gives you the... But if you try to uh, 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 not sin and do the right thing in your own power, you're doing it by the law. 
either your law or God's law. And when your law is God's word with your flavor on it. Amen? So when you do that, you go back to four. When you do that, you make Christ of no effect in your life. What is, it didn't say Jesus. It said Christ, the anointing. Now remember, the Holy Ghost in you is what makes you in Jesus, I mean, in Jesus and Jesus in you. You and the Father in you. And the Father in you right? And what is, what is that? That's the anointing. That's the, the Holy Ghost. So you make the anointed or the anointing of no effect in your life, so therefore you don't have the power. You don't manifest what God wants you to manifest, right? So what Satan does, he does two things in number one. He either gets you to focus on your sin and try to get you to fix it yourself, or he tries to get you to think that there's no way that what you're doing is forgivable. And so all we do is focus on our sin. We focus on what we did wrong and what's our issue and how do we fix it and how do we change it and how do we do this. And we think all of this, what is our issue? And our whole, our whole focus, our whole church life is on sin. And unfortunately, we've got some churches that that's all they do is they focus on your sin. You ever been to a church and they give you all the rules and they let you know for sure what they don't like? They don't like the smoking. They don't like the way you dress. They don't like the makeup. They don't like this. They don't like all that. They give you that list, right? All they're doing is focusing on the wrongs. You don't have to tell somebody they're sinning. The Holy Ghost is doing that. That's not your job. You're supposed to let them know. And if God tells you to tell them, but you don't have to point out their issues. Amen? So the number one thing, the very first thing that God, uh, Satan wants to do is he wants you to focus on sin. He wants you to focus on your sin or he wants to focus on you trying to uh, clean up your sin. In other words, you, you, what he wants you to do is think, what Jesus did for me by dying on the cross is, it, it didn't work. It, did, it wasn't good enough. Or he wants you to focus on you, you, you doing all the Hail Marys and all the, all the things that you've got to go through for repentance. And he said, all you have to do is ask for forgiveness and you're back in st right standing with, with God. He is faithful to forgive. I want, a, by a show of hands, how many in here have some things that you know that you're doing wrong and that is on the forefront of your mind most of the day? All right, look, that's over three quarters of the, the, the place. So you're focusing on something that God's already taken care of. Now you say, well, well, I asked for forgiveness, but I did it again. But Philippians tells us that he loves us so much that he works, us, it works in us the will to do and the power to do. So that tells us right there that he knows that you've got some things that you know that's wrong, but you want to, but you don't have the will. You don't have the power to do it. So what he does is he says, okay, I'm going to work in you that will to do it, that power to do it, and make that change. But what do we do? We focus on our issue. And what happens is it, it keeps us from being in the Father and the Father in us because we don't feel worthy. We don't feel worthy, so we there then don't have the manifestation of the anointing. We don't have the manifestation of the Holy Ghost in us. Therefore, we don't bring forth the fruit of that relationship. And it will be either in what's going, what your sin is, or it could be something that is going on that you need to make a change in. In other words, bringing it to that, to that work environment that needs to change. Or to your, your, to your children. Amen. Or to your ministry. 
If I'm always focusing on what I did wrong, if I'm always focusing on how I fix it, my mind is not being on him or, or having that relationship with him. I'm fo- I w- how many when, you got, when the sin is so heavy on you, you won't pray for nothing? Won't read. You, you, then you, you, you don't even want to come to church when it's really heavy, right? And then there's a lot of us that we put it out so much, we just go through the motions. We're not having a relationship, but we're doing all the things that looks like we're in the relationship. We come to church, we're doing a hallelujah and praising and doing all that other stuff. And we think that we are fooling somebody. But we're not, right? So the number one thing is he tries to get us to focus on our sin. Go with me to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There is no temptation taken you, but, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now go with me to Numbers chapter 11, verse 11. Whew. How many's hot? Just a couple of us. Well, there's only a couple of us that are, are, are anointed right now. Numbers 11, 11 says, And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight, that thou layest the burden of all these people upon me? Moses was like, I'm done with these people. I'm done with them. And the, what I want to bring out in these two scriptures is number two. The number two distraction to keeping us in him and him in us is a major issue or major major problem. Let's say you had a death in the family. Let's say um, that you are have a real financial burden. Let's say you're you're in a relationship and they break up and they leave you. Let's say that you're trying to start a ministry and everywhere you turn, it falls apart. Let's say you're trying to start a business. Let's say there's been one thing after another. Consistent battle. Boom, boom, boom. But then this church, I know it's gone on because I know it's happened to me. But then I know a lot of you guys too. As soon as you get out of one thing, you're going into the next, Right? It seems like every time you turn around, there's something. And so the number two thing is he tries to distract you with problems. How many find themselves not spending time with the Lord because you're focusing on the problem? Grandson's talking to me. Pop, pop. Let's say you got a sick relative. Always focusing on going to the hospital. Always focusing on getting them, getting them well. In Moses' case, he was to deliver them to the promised land, but they kept messing up. And he was like, I'm done. Just kill them. Let's say you're running, you're running a, a business and you've got all, all your employees, like Mike, are, are pains in the butt. <laughs> How many has, you're in something and you're, you got, every time you turn around, there's a problem. Every time you turn around. Cannot get up one day without uh, getting a phone call, there's a problem. 
Well, maybe Satan's trying to prevent you from getting into that presence. Because if you've found forgiveness in the Lord and you've allowed that forgiveness to come and you know that he can, you can, you, you, that he, he's working in you the will to do and change. Now, I'm not talking about this false, this false stuff that you can sin and it doesn't bother you. That's not what I'm talking about. It needs to bother you, but you, it doesn't need to in, debilitate. How do I say that? Debilitate you to the point where you can't move. There should be some sorrow, but it shouldn't grieve you and mourn you that you can't move. Right? All right. So you, that's, you, you got that, but the, then, all right, now there's problem after problem when you're focusing on the problem. And the very thing that you need fixed, if you were in the presence with Jesus, you probably would get the answer. And sometimes it's walk this out. There is no escape. It's walk it out. Walk it out gloriously so you're an example to everybody else. No, Jesus, thank you. I want to whine and cry the whole way through. Thank you. Can I get a witness? I want to sit my butt down, throw a temperature tantrum, and scrawl and, and ball and all those other things. Snot running out everywhere, crying because I'm not getting my way. Right? So if Satan can get you focused on that, it separates you from that relationship. It separates you from being intimate with him. And it separates you and it keeps you from having the manifestation of God are the works. And the works is what changes the situation. So number two is to focus on the problem. Number three. The other, the, uh, number three distraction is you are to declare your, in, in your mouth is the power to, for life or death. You are supposed to see it, hear it, declare it, and walk it out. That's your job. You're supposed to hear and know and see what God wants you to do. And you're supposed to declare it and walk it out. That's what the Word tells us. Hear what God says. Know it. Receive it. You, hit, you see it in your, in your... He said, how do you get faith? How do you get faith, guys? Hearing. By hearing. And then what does He say? You're supposed to speak to it, the mountain, and it be removed, Right? So if you can't see the mountain being removed, you're not going to be able to do it, right? In other words, in your heart, you've got to see or know that God's going to do it, right? And then you've got to declare it. And then there's sometimes when you're declaring it's not happening, but you still got to start walking towards it, right? So that's our operation. The third distraction is somewhere in that Satan's messing up with that formula, so you don't hear it, or you don't know it, or you can't see it, or he's keeping you from declaring it, or he's getting you to wait to walk towards it. Some of us know that God's going to move, but we won't move. All right, that's like this. We're supposed to, we feel like we're supposed to go to the nations, but we're sitting here in this chair waiting for someone to send us the money and send us the invitation and send us the, 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 national, the, the, the nation that we're supposed to go to. We're sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting. And a year goes by, and five years goes by, and 10 years goes by, and 20 years goes by. And we're mad as hell at God. Because we knew that we knew. It spoke to us. We knew we were supposed to go to the nations. What happened? We didn't get up, and we didn't start going. See, when Pastor Annette and I first came into the church, we got prophesied over. They brought prophet after prophet into those churches, into that little church. And they prophesied great things over me and Annette. 
And then there was other people that was in that church that great things were prophesied over. But they're either still in that little church or they're not there anymore and they're not even in church anymore. And maybe two or three of us did or got to where we were prophesied over. What's the difference? Me and Annette's not better. Me and Annette got up and started walking towards it. We started learning the Bible. We were going to be teachers. We were going to be ministers. So if I'm going to minister the word, i got to know the word. Right? I, I got to start looking and start seeing. All right? God then started. And at that time, we didn't know we were going to be pastors. But then when he spoke to us that we were going to be pastors, we started looking at other ministries and saying, okay, God, what are we supposed to do? And God started declaring to us, Here, this, I want you to do it this way. So we started walking towards it. When, when Moses got told that I'm taking you to a promised land, he had to get up out of Egypt and walk towards the promised land, right? So somewhere in that formula, Satan is working on you not to see it, not to hear it, not to know it, not to speak it, or not to start walking towards it. And most of it is not to walk towards it. Most of it is getting us to sit there. If God spoke to you and said, that he spoke to you and said, hey, you're supposed to marry this beautiful young lady, right? So if you never took her out, was never sweet to her, never asked her to marry her, uh, asked her to marry you, and you would never be engaged, and on May 8th, you wouldn't be getting married, right? May 13th? <laughs> July 8th. Sarash is July 8th. So May 13th. You wouldn't be getting married on that day because you didn't ask her. You didn't take her out. You didn't show her your good looks. You didn't show her your muscles. You didn't show her your, your, your uh, charisma, all of those things, and she didn't fall in love with you. But you knew that you knew she was supposed to marry you because it told you in your heart. But you didn't do anything, so you didn't got her. But you do. You did. And you got her. Now, she still saw all your flaws and still loves you. God loves you, man. Why? Because he walked towards it. He started moving towards what God showed him. At a young age, the Lord showed the instrument to him. He started playing. If he hadn't picked up the drumsticks, he would never have been. And the best thing about it is then he's passing it on down to his son. That, see, that's, that's, a, that's a whole other message right there. So Satan comes in and he says, look, don't go there. It's going to come. It's going to come. Wait. Just wait. It's going to wait. Just wait. It'll be here. And the last thing that Satan does I don't know if there's a scripture towards it. But Satan gets us to focus on someone else's anointing, someone else's gift. I love to sing to God, but I don't like anybody to hear me. <laughs> Shut up. I wish so bad I could do what Ashley does. But, if I, but I know my gift. I know where I'm good at. And I'm satisfied. So I don't focus on and get stumbled or, or cause, be caused to stumble by focusing on what I wish I could do by looking at her. But there's other ministers that have platforms that are bigger than mine that I could get start focusing on and say, well, you know, it's like Damon Thompson. I preach a lot like he does. He's one of my favorite guys. But he's had this, he's had this platform that's huge. And I could, and I have at times focused on why does he get such a big platform and I don't. Come on, I'm being vulnerable with you, but how many are like that? How, how come they're boss and I'm not? How many's had a boss that was an idiot? Mike, if you raise your hand, I'm going to punch you out. You're going, why, how did they become boss? I have no clue. I am so much smarter than they are. Well, maybe it's because you think that way. It's why God hadn't put you there yet. Right? 
See, we focus so much on, uh, all right, and then we try to be like them, especially in the church. We try to put somebody else's anointing on. Uh, uh, Ren and James, as we were, we were speaking into their life and training them up, they kept trying to walk our shoes. And I was like, baby, finally I was like, you guys, you, you, don't, you don't have to be us. you got to be you. And you guys are better pastors than we are. And you've got to realize that. But that's not our call. That's your call. And I'm not calling you to be apostolic. I'm not calling you to run the whole thing. I'm asking you to take this piece and pick it up and run with it and do better in it than I did. And that's my whole vision for the whole church is the daycare. Annette and I ran it for a while. But our heart is not to run a daycare. Our heart is to build it up, get someone else in there, and to run it. My daughter's doing that. In each part of the ministry, either I get it started or we get it started, and we want somebody that's called to do it to get plugged in there and take it to, to, to places that I couldn't because my focus wasn't on that. My focus was on the whole thing or on different pieces, right? But what if I just got jealous of someone who was making the daycare or pastoring and getting all the people to, to, to engage, or what if, I, what if people were focused on my preaching and you know, people would try to preach like me? I don't try to preach like me. Preach like what God lays on your heart. And we try to put somebody else's anointing on, somebody else's cloak on, and it doesn't fit. And we get jealous or we, get, we, 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 we don't feel like we fit adequate. We don't feel like we're, we're good enough. And we look at all of that and Satan distracts us with that. You are made in his image and you are made to do what you're called to do. And I'm made to do what I'm called to do. And together, we're formed into one body to do what God's called the Point Christian Fellowship to do. And I always explain this to everybody. If, uh, like, this whole thing, put, up, put, up, put some kind of picture up there for me, please. Anything, it doesn't matter. I always explain it this way. All right. Every one of the, there's pixels in everything in here. You take one pixel out and it doesn't look like nothing, but you put one put it all together and it forms this picture. Well, that's that's what the the dust to glory ministries, the Point Christian Fellowship is. We're one big mural of what God is painting for us to do. And each one of us is a pixel. And Pastor Annette and I are just one pixel of it. You're, you're the other pixels. And it takes you. And, and, and if, if, we, if this section right here was missing, it would be incomplete. But in that, okay, over here may not be as noticeable. You just say, okay, it's, it's, it's a little picture. But what if it's this right here in the middle? It's going to be real noticeable. But you, you are valuable. You're one of those pixels that makes that picture. And you're valuable to this place. And, and, and nobody sitting beside you is better or beneath you. But Satan wants us to focus on that. He wants us to look at that. So the four distractions are our sin, a major issue, the hearing, seeing, and knowing God, and and getting us focused on, on none of that, walking it out, which is probably should be the last one. And then number four, focusing on other people, anointing what they're doing, and being distracted. Either they, they're better or we're better. And Satan gets us to focus on those things, and in that, it gets the Holy Spirit, and it stops us from having, us, having that intimate thing. Because on the sin, we've saying Christ's work is not good enough. On the obstacle, we're saying the obstacle is too big. On the walking it out, we're saying there's no way I can do what you've called me to do. And then on the last one, you're saying someone else is better or less than me. Amen. And in that, we've just told the Holy Ghost, I don't need you. So, I want to challenge you. I want you to bow your head, close your eyes, and I want to ask you a question. 
And I want you to take a piece of paper and I want you to write it down. Which one of those four is preventing you from having manifestations with the Holy Ghost? Some of you may have all four. Some of you may have all four. Some of you may have a couple in one. But I want you to write it down, and I want you to then ask God to help you get rid of it. So that you can have that intimacy with the Holy Ghost, and you can be in the Father, and the Father in you, and you can start representing are showing the Father. So the number one is sin. The other one is the obstacle. Number two is hearing and knowing God, His direction, His promise, and walking it out. Y'all help me f- f- shorten that one down. And number two, uh, I mean, number four, looking at someone else, whether better or, or, or less than. And my heart's desire is that we will get rid of that, focus that, change that, and we'll start manifesting the Father. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word. I pray that we walk it out, that we be hearers, and not, uh, uh, but we be doers. And we walk out, Father God, this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Shake hands, hug next. Don't get mixed up. We'll see you Wednesday. What? Drive safe.